because you are going to get the full LEC experience. You're going to be here till midnight. <sighs> 500 CS win condition and option, of course, just memeing a little bit. But Rogue, if they go late, they do win the game. And thus, of course, Renata perfectly all 10 once he clears out this wave, but not having the best of times so far. As, uh, again, we'll stop the base, but Shigenda kind of has free move to do whatever he wants. Basically all of the time. All in from Cassante, oh. looking to turn it around, but the shield is still there. Shigenda's just zooming away. He's a bird again. Nothing Photon can do. Daglas oh. on the way up. Shigenda overstaying his welcome on the top side. Knocked out. Daglas come up, and now this should turn into a couple of grubs. Markun is here. Alongside to Willis, support and jungle of both teams. Seems One's like down. Markun should get one. And take back. A little bit of extra CC. I don't know if they have enough to lock down Zoellis here, but VTO now moving up. Again, full health. VTO. Really wanting to find this pick. Wanting to find this kill. She's just going to zoom on out of there. Just turns into a ram, but the pullback is clean from Photon. VTO can now follow up. Shigenda should just be dead. Kill donated to the Akali. He's all come back off cooldown. Just makes this 2-3. Uh, they take down for Vitality, so... First dragon, second one will be a cloud. Easier of yeah. lacking all their damage if you end up going uh, towards the Lethal you build. So I do like that card he's done. It's all out on the top side Ender. from Photon. Ghost trade. Speed up coming through. Q3, where is it going to go? Markun, can he find the angle back on the Photon? Photon cancels the ult. He's going to get very tanky, but he walks right into the bush. Will they just be able to burn him down the pullback there? Daglas trying to keep his top laner alive, but it is not enough. He needs to get the hell out. You're going to try to body block as much as possible. Quick crash down to get out to safety. Nice punish from Rogue. Yeah. They, they're, they're so uh, easily dissuaded, man. I, I, they saw Dagos, though, so it's, a, it's the right yeah, call. It's, it's yeah. the right call. Okay, so he wants some for him. Change, handshake, and now they're going to try to turn this one. Big damage goes on to Karzi. Now trying to turn it back. Karzi lives for a little bit of time. They're buying a bit more. They cannot find the kill. He will drop. Bailout, not enough. So at least getting taken in by VTO. VTO now looking to follow up. Cop is dead as well. Two quick kills for the Akali. Oh, the Zeris last week was rough, but back on to comfort, and VTO is popping off. Triple on the bottom side. Four kills in total for VTO. He's going to be a monster once he goes 50 on the smite. At least now going to try to retreat. That's a chunky wall, though. He's going to have to be careful. Karzi now in trouble. Can't flash out to safety. Ulti only going to hit the Vi. Markun now behind him. Easy pickings here in the mid lane. Solid opportunity. Big punish for Rogue. 0-2-3 oh, and three for Karzi this game. I mean, they are still hanging around up here. Are they going to commit? Ultimate's still available. Photon can still go all out, but I think he just backs away here. Ulti coming in for Rakan. Smite going through. Pulling the Rakan back now. Q1, unstoppable still. Going to try to dash into safety. Q3 for the pullback. Hillisang waiting over the wall. Photon will drop. They have spotted Hillisang. Rogue. Yeah. If VTO's even a screen away from comp like he is right now. You just have to be oh, worried. The engage interrupt now coming in on the VTO. VTO can't just try to dash through. We'll retreat to the safety of his team. Shigenda gonna go for the stun here, but the tower is already down. Team now looking to follow up. Daglas stepping forward. Q3 from Photon not gonna connect. Scryer's Bloom showing that Larson is on the way, and Vitality will just back. It's the, press, it's the press conference before the MMA fight, you know? They're just talking <laughs> smack. No one's actually hitting each other yet. They're just weighing in. TP into the mid lane. Rogue, ready for the 5v5. VTO off to the side. Shigenda has spotted him. Rogue have spotted him. Hostile takeover hitting a few. They're just focusing on the objective. They just want to burn this one down. Markun pulled out of the pit. It should just be Chemtech soul for the side of Vitality. Rogue came. But just to spectate. Just to watch it taken away from them. Photon. Is, uh, the only DPS that Vitality really have is through Kazi. So, ooh, hello. Stepping in, going forward here. Shigenda could be in trouble. The Ghost now coming through. The fall of CC is there. Zoe Lee's off to the side. Udi are still so incredibly tanky, however. Photon, not enough damage in isolation. You can see Shigenda heal up so much in that exchange. Partially due to the red buff, but... Little Turtle Stance coming through. And power Turtle Stance. This late into the game, really, really powerful. But, as I was saying, Baron, it's not the quickest in the world. If they actually found that pick onto Shigenda, it wouldn't have been too bad to look for an attempt. But Rogue can just sit here happily. Flash forward, stun, looking to lock down Shigenda. VTO spotting on the side, trying to keep your eyes on Comp. Dash backwards, Charm is there, but VTO already in the shroud. Comp's gonna be in trouble here. Raccoon trying to body block, but in he goes! Golden in the back line is VTO. Eyes on that Akali. The devastation she can wreak is legendary, but Photon, the one to find the kill. Vitality now following up. Rogue looking a bit scattered here. I think you just concede the tier two. 
With Flash over the wall, Hillisang now coming in. No one getting hit by the hostile takeover, but the handshake is there. Larson now gonna get pulled back and cut down in an instant. Is this the game? Bump now running, VTO found another. Marcoon will get dropped as well. It's a double for the Akali. They've got the buff, they've got the Void Mites. Vitality might just end it here. At the drop of a hat, it felt like. Vitality find their engage in the mid lane. They've got a wave. And it's as simple as that, Rogue. There you it go. It felt like. Tying it up, one to three. One of the League of Legends games of all time. There can be no doubt. <sighs> if this isn't just a case study of what we expect from Rogue in the sense of aggression. Uh, yeah, I just, I, you know, I think there were, there were signs of hope against G2. That was... Into us in Saarwold, into the tank of an Udyr that can become untargetable, into hopefully Flacker and Kaiser respecting the enemy team with their engage and Niski can try to get this wave in and not cost them too much as Exekick and Dos were coming out from a reset, so Dos just helping out his mid lane. Knock up there, oh. knock back, knocks him away from the tower, burn it, ticket, first blood! Just a bit disrespectful from Perks, wasn't expecting the dive in. And, uh, by anyone. And that's how you know. He that. had all the information <laughs> he needed to know that that kill was coming, uh, but you know, just did not respect the execution. Uh, I, you know, no harm, no foul. Lose this flash. We'll see if they can actually punish it. I feel like Niski's going to be able to just clear away the wave for the most Wyatt part. Goes down. Up. Wonder going to sidestep. Now here comes the Nocturne, and this time Udir is out of health. Well played, a SK. Every single play SK has have made has happened so slowly. But they're still making it work. Yeah, and again, it's their ability to attack these side lanes. And in this case, they've got the Nocturne, they've got Rumble. Very easy, as oh, yeah, boss Could be in trouble. Is has got no mana. Yeah. There is no reason for him to be here. He's just offering up a double kill if he sticks around. Shenis ulti is going to connect. Shield there, extra assist going in for the bottom side of the map. And Team Heritage is going to have to play out of their positioning pretty much perfectly, because the dive is really easy to execute. Speaking of relevant, easy to execute. Have overstayed. That's the package on top side of relevant. We'll just drop here. Kill going to be given over to Perks. Takes his sweet time there. Gatling gun and an extra rocket to finish it off. Kills now tied. Gold now dead. With another plate there on the bottom side to even things up, but wonder in the area means he will not get the opportunity. Drake won't even really be contested. Isma able to take that one down. The dive line does make a fair amount of sense. Here's this Herald plate that we were talking about. The relevant walking up as well. If Flacken tries to stick around, he might just get Rumble ulted. They're just focusing down the tower as quickly as they can. Celestial opposition has been procced. Flacken a little bit more vulnerable, but Team Heretic's quick to collapse. Quick to deny any potential follow-up. Niski stepping in. Perks has the package. But again, posturing. And now the Seraphine shielding and sustain. Starts to come into play as Exekick forced to back away. Package to the backside. Exekick still standing. That's going to be big. Blue Wolf hitting on to two. Is it going to be enough damage? Exekick continuing to free fire. Yankos leaping in. Should just try to take down the Zen. So many blinking health bars on the side of SK. Oh. Kaiser stepping in. Finding the kill on the Zen. And now Yankos looking to follow up. Wind becomes lightning. Already connecting on Isma. Meanwhile, Team Heretics pushing SK back to their tier one tower and looking to secure this. So play. Team Heretics get a very, very free fight. Diving through the choke and they'll get this dragon so, so strong. Man. I mean, look at enemy Senna, 82 CS, 1.2k gold lead over the Rakan, almost two items completed. But there is the ulti knockup coming through, but immediately no fall if the play has already gone bad. There's an Udyr in the midst of the entire SK lineup. Finally, the equalizer goes down, but there's no fall if there's no room to respond. Team Heretics slaughtering them. The Abelia Assault does nothing in the face of the Zin. Oh, knock back under the tower. Maybe they can get one back in return. Execute terrible guns for the follow-up, and Team Heretics standing five members strong. They will not go down. And with the sustain that they've got, they should be able to just go and try and turn this into a Baron attempt at the very least. Isma doesn't have Smite, so this should be a freebie. Dracos, I don't really feel like SK can contest this. They're just going to look towards the mid lane, try and trade some towers. This will be a Baron for Team Heretics. Yeah, it's coming into this week, SK, of course, uncontested it in first place, but Team Heretics looking to tie it up. Confidence on the double support item strategy. Perks, aggressive on the roams. And now everything coming up in favor of Team Heretics. Unless they can really find a perfect, perfect engage, which, as we call out time and time again, they've really struggled to do. Yeah, Isma walking up to Veer, but it's just going to have to back off. 
Perks off to the side. Can't go unstoppable. Axe Kick forced to flash away. Maybe they can try to turn this one back. Perks has been caught out. Big shutdown. Going to slow down the Baron. Team Heretic's forced to back away for a brief moment, but they can't just set their sights on the impatient hit. Hold off SK. Or they can go in. Knock up, not going to come through. Wonder just going to wander forward here. Try to lock up Niski. Wind becomes lightning. Niski makes it over the wall. Follow up is there, however. Charmed now by the Seraphine Ultimate. Another member down. Dosh is going to lay down a little bit of vision. Pull the Drake a bit. Isma clearing midway, but this should just be another Drake for the side of Team Heretics. Two infernals to the good of Team Heretics. Feels pretty good. When you consider. To build Serpent's Fang. Nope. Uh, even if it would be a pretty cost-effective buy in terms of what it could get you. It's just a 25, 2600 gold, pretty expensive at this point. Isma caught out and uh, is just gonna die here. Jamon, I think this game is over. I think that yeah. SK are dead men walking. This is oh, an I, impossible comp to break is. We're just, just gonna wander forward. Perk's now following up. It just doesn't feel like SK have an answer. It felt like they had to try and find those engages 10 minutes ago. They weren't able Not to and now it's just- and dead getting run over across it's the map. It's a two item set of support with Blood Song. She hits like a truck. All right, SK being corralled, SK being herded. They're gonna have a few more minutes to form up because there's no Baron, there's no Dragon on the map. But in the meantime, Team Heretics are just gonna break down some of these towers. It's on another patch. No, we won't, thankfully. I'm just trying to rack my brain. I mean, I feel like so much of this game is just in Team Heretics' hands. Back back there, Axe Kick already dead. Perks off to the side, untouched. Dust knocked down. Wonder just gonna walk forward and tank this tower. Look at those shields, folks. What can you do? I feel like the answer is just nothing. Damn. I feel like they won the split already. They got so many shields. <laughs> Team Heretics. They're an unstoppable death ball. Captain by a DOS. This is kind of what you have to do. You have to look for these avenues. You have to look for these angles, but at this point, he is a lamb to the Ooh. slaughter. Oh that slow is a massive. All right, going on a walkabout. Can get infernal spe move speed. Okay. He's on a journey. He's playing his own mini game. It's like Pac-Man, but he will just ineb. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna die in the end. It's exactly like Pac-Man. But instead, he's gonna make it out until he sees Udyr come around the corner. Oop! Udyr found him. He was shopping. He had no cooldowns. He will drop. Wonder is now known. Ha. You have to understand, the League of Legends player base are wizards. No matter what the design team does, they will ruin oh. the game. They will find a way. Well, Doss has no health or flash. Wonder oh, oh. now backing off. Exekick is dead already. Equalizer does nothing. Yanko's following up. Wind becomes lightning. My favorite ability to say today is a double kill goes through for Team Heretics. And yeah, get excited. They've already won. They're taking their time, whether they can get Baron. They still have to be disciplined. They can't overstep. They can't make mistakes. But after last week's performance, they want to clean it up, you know? Yeah. Keep it as clean as possible. Three, one. Yeah, but this is the thing, I don't think the bounce. Perks dealt 4K damage, leaping out of the fight. All right, SK. What do you have for us at your 10K gold deficit? Because we know what heretics can do. Or is it just going to be it's not a slow bleed? It's a very quick one. Isma tries to strike fear into their hearts. They are not afraid at all. Oh. They're doing tons of damage. SK getting slaughtered in their own base. Can creep not stepping forward though. Have they potentially overstepped? The answer is no. They are actually unkillable. Are you kidding me? There are two towers standing. Team Heretics don't care. Team Heretics coming in, tying up SK three and one. They will join SK at the top of the table. And Team Heretics are our first team to demonstrate that double support item that we were talking about all of last weekend, didn't get to see. And uh, Team Heretics showing us why it's so bloody broken. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see it again in our next game, G2 versus Matt Lyons. Koi, but of course, key up player of the game, vote now at OEC on X. I also oh. want to give a big shout out to Mickey Zyra. to Zyra. Yeah. Very hard we not react to this. The champion is, by the way, very OP. It's Zyra. Lord, Zyra. it's Zyra. What? Okay. It's Zyra. It is Zyra, yeah. The, the yeah. good thing about yeah. Zyra. Seeing perhaps if they can catch out Alvaro, but...
Even with Yike coming across, Alioya is in the area. We might see another one of those skirmishes as MDK look to react to this push by G2. Flash forward by Alvaro, flash away by Mickey, but the Spectral more the heal for the movement speed. Spectral more stun going down as well as Mickey falls low. 100 HP on him. He will fall first. The bailout available for Alioya, but he doesn't even need it as they chase onto Han Summer. Can't quite get the damage down. They're still looking for a little bit more. Hans will be able to flash this wall and MDK get first blood. But this is the problem that we've seen with G2 pretty much in all of their games so far, is going for these aggressive plays and a backfire in the early stage. MDK early in this game, about a thousand gold ahead. A lot of some of that as well on Mervin in the top lane, who is out farming his lane opponent. You can see Broken Blade just trying to trade in, but Gwen always known as a good pick into the Cassante. A little bit more difficult when Yike is here to help though. Mervin, no flash, remember, and will be taken down. G2 finally on the board. Yeah, not giving him any. Top side to bot side to make sure he's there to protect his AD carry. G2 will have a small window for the next few moments where they could lush up. I don't know if Elio can go any deeper here. You can see Mickey and Hansama would be the first ones to react. Both have the level 6. Elio is going very hard for this. The Blast Cone available, but the Season Desist into the Grasping Roots will knock him out. Yikes still trading in. Frescawi moving from the mid lane. Elio will fall, but the Bandai will bring him back. And now MDK can start to open up. Hansama caught out once again as he will go out. And now Mickey trying to escape. Only has the Flash. Good Grasping Roots, but will it be enough? Elio chasing in. And his three quick kills over to MDK. And MDK just control the jungle of G2. This is a the damage to try and set this up as easily as we'd like, even getting out of the grasp between are the ultimate oh. and oh, okay. BB's dead. Mirwin, that's two Just solo kills from Mirwin. Commanding control of this game. Yeah, I mean BB goes for the knockback matches to get it, but um, on the 14.1B as well, the ratio on the uh, the passive was nerfed a little bit, but Mirwin still confident to go for it, managing to hit all of those ultimate stacks. TP in about 25 seconds time. I think this is so cool to see though from MDK is actually Mickey's gonna get caught here as well now. He has flash. Super has the arrow flashed away. Hans Summer dodges to the other side. Hostile takeover coming in. That's going to hit Hans Summer, who will chip away at Mickey. Yike going in onto Super, who will fall even through the bailout. Frescari on his way, but remember, no pop blossom for that Nico. So Yike will be able to take Drake because of that force in the bottom lane. So now MPK looking down the barrel of two Drakes to make sure that they play around the possibility of the tower very well. And they don't have to play around the possibility of it because it's now it's become a certainty in the mid lane. And Lioia will ride the Herald, charge it straight into the tower. The hostile takeover hits onto Han Summer. There's the arrow as well. No cleanse on him. Spectral more for the stun. The CC chain from NDK is enough, and the tower falls to the power of the mighty mites. The Rift are now going to charge in once again. Super will get chucked out of it, get a shield as well, and more mites come in. The more grubs you've collected, the more mites come out of that charge. And it does actually. I was talking about this with a, a team yesterday. It does the same amount of damage, whether you ride it or not, but that's quite a lot of damage going out onto, onto Frescawi, but he gets the shield. The bailout enough to help him out. And MDK get another kill as G2 look for the engage. They might even get another tower out of this. MDK accelerating through that mid game, the Rift Hell Juice. But I totally agree with you. It can feel like you're trying to make too many plays at once or just trying to make a play when you don't actually need to. Broken Blade trading with Mervin here in the top side as the Ike comes across. The all out pulls Mervin back. Remember, still no flash on that Gwen. She might be immune, but that immunity falls off relatively quickly. Mickey stunned up by Elioia. Spectral Moor coming out, and Mickey should fall. Hit flashes the Heartbreaker in the opposite direction. Alvaro, though, with a nice handshake, pulls him back to his demise. A deal with the devil there for Mickey. And now perhaps a mid push coming out from MDK. They've got the wave in. They'll look towards bot tier one, bot tier two, perhaps instead just a reset of League of Legends. Just do one thing at one time. The other side gives up the pressure that they could exert. Great teams obviously will be able to make more than one play as we see G2 trying to make a play up towards the top lane. Mervin falls once again. Even though his laning phase was fire, Mervin now is falling down the list. The have to answer on the side lanes and they can't really contest for the dragon. So G2 just out playing on the map at the moment. Yes, they really are. All the gold again. So I think it might be 240 gold you spend on it, I think. Uh, but it's not a large investment as Merwin is shuffled back here. Yike looking for the damage. Merwin going to try and dash across the wall, but he doesn't have time as G2 collapse again. Alvaro now caught out as well. Yike standing on that blast cone. Alvaro trying to click it, but he just can't get onto it. Hostile takeover will force Broken Blade back, as will the blast cone. And Yoya now stepping in, looking to see perhaps if he can steal away this Baron. No top lane up for MDK. He does have TP 27 seconds away. MDK will see. 
the Baron as they step around the corner. 6,000 HP on it. TP behind as Frescawi looks for a flank position. MDK might just be calling for the fight after the Baron has fallen. Frescawi gets the three-man knockout, but the rest of the team aren't close enough to close in. Hunt Summer will fall first. Frescawi has to pop the stopwatch, but immediately goes pop afterwards. And now Caps is sliding forward and gliding forward. Elioia falls. The bailout brings him back for a second, but it's not enough before he's shut out of the fight. G2 ace MDK around the Baron. The team fight from G2 is just too strong. Frescawi thought he saw the play in his eyes, but no one there to follow. G2 capitalized, and just like that, again, G2 managed to swing. This has gone out of my brain as well, it seems. Um, Daps trading with Merwin, and uh, Merwin losing out on that trade right now. He'll try and snip snip him, but Caps can just wait this out. Merwin doesn't really have many ways out apart from the dash. The arrow's going to land onto Mickey, puts down the grasping roots. Merwin losing to Caps, as we said, as Caps will take the kill. Hans Summer getting caught, though, and locked out by MDK. MDK able to make a play on the other side of the map. Broken Blade and Yike now pushing forward. Mickey no ult. Used it in that last engage. Looking good for G2, though. Look at where Caps is pushing Merwin out. And Merwin doesn't really have a good TP ward. He has to kind of come into the face of G2 if he wants to do anything. And Caps is just able to roam down. So G2 abusing that fact at the moment to set themselves up nicely here. MDK really need those flank positions as well. And you can see the sides awarded. Mickey gating off Merwin from the top side. Frescawi on a ward. G2 will just wait it out. Season and assist. Caps jumps across. They decide who their target is. Frescawi, the first one. And Yoya trying to get onto Caps. He dodges away with a heartbreaker. Perfectly played there by El Yoya. The route going down onto Yike as well as Yoya tries to trade back in. Yike trying to get back into the pit, but he can't get there in time. As Super takes the Drake. And this is a great fight for MDK. The lockdown on Caps. And Merwin shutting Broken Blade out. The fact that Caps hit nobody with that ultimate is a disaster. The stop sure, one. MDK will just reset. Caps is putting pressure down in the mid lane to try and force Mirwin to or deal with it. They? So as long as they can dance here, G2 are happy. Mickey has no flash. And Leo is looking for him. A blast going away once again. G2 will start up the Baron. All five members of G2 here. Merwin catching mid. You have a lot of poke here, but there's the all-in from Breebe. Breebe looking for it. He hasn't used that ultimate as of yet. 6,000 HP on the Baron. Broken Blade dances back. Elioya low. 3,000 now on the Baron as Merwin goes forward. Hostile takeover only hits onto BB. That's not really the target you want. Frescawi goes in, only hits onto BB. It's still not the target you want as the Baron falls to G2. And some are flashing away. Caps trading down towards the bottom side as he finds an answering kill. Mickey's already fallen, but G2 now start to collapse. Elioya caught out. Nothing he can do, the last man standing, but G2 wipe away MDK. The patience from G2 paying off dividends there. They know, hey, look, we've got Zyra poke, Hansama poke, caps out ranges, so many members of MDK. As long as we can continue to play this slow, we can whittle them down bit by bit and force my MDK to go all out. And G2 are more than happy to welcome them into their waiting arms. That's just going to be the game. G2 should be able to get through these towers. Like a hot knife through butter. MDK put up a really good fight in the early game. They had the advantage, but G2's ability just to play around the map was a little bit too much today. G2 will meet SK at the top of the scores at three and one. Same day. <laughs> a different a day, different same day G2. G2. Yeah, I mean, it's been a... Uh very much the story that has been written for G2, not having control in the early stages, and even a sideways look from the, uh, from the back end staff there. But I think that's the main thing is like, uh, you've got control is gone wonky every single time in the early stages, specifically in the bot lane. That, uh, for in the case for BDS, if Adam can take over the top lane, they tend to be able to win out their games. I have seen them struggling a little bit with ice, the uh, synergy, the communication around later game team fights. Often he's not there at the start. Maybe it'll work out for Adam, but. Uh, I think this is definitely going to be more of a, we are going to fight, and Fnatic want to do that right now. Good hawk shot from Ice did spot out the fact that Jun and Razork were waiting here. Trying to stop LeBrov from stepping in. They'll land the stun, they'll land the knockup, crash down. Razork flashing forward, LeBrov very low on HP, will be taken out. Just get the hook oh. back into a three-man shuffle. Shea on his way with the season assist, and now Razork's tanking the tower second. BDS get two out of a Fnatic play. That was nasty from BDS, but could have been an absolute disaster for LeBrov. Actually ends up working out super well, thanks that shuffle from you. And this is good from Shea as well. Realizes Razork's going to tank the tower next, so he locks him down in that tower range. It does seem a little disjointed. Oh, hang on, hold on to that point. Rob's going to hook back. 
back here. Jun still no flash, no way out of this, really. The arrow's gonna go down as well onto Noah. No Jun way. able to escape the chain of corruption, locking them up. LeBron almost falls. But a great escape there from the Fnatic bottom lane. Yeah, the old from Noah. Keep I mean, I think it was the same as before when you really when you really kill someone 1v1. Uh, today I got killed 1v1, which felt uh, a, little, a little bad, a little embarrassing for me. Um, oh, this is all in here yeah, happening. Ragnarok coming out. Oscar really doesn't really have anywhere to go. Does still have the ghost, but Adam with the undertow will land it. It's the power of Olaf. See, it's not just you, BB. It's okay. Don't it's worry. not just me. Thank I think it's a good time to say goodbye to you, Broken Blade. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Uh, yeah. Broken Blade is uh, signing out. Anything you want to leak quickly before you go? Um, uh, no. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Broken Blade. Thank you, thank you. Oscar is going to get locked down here under the tower, and BDS are playing through that top lane now. Tunnel at Corefields with six void grubs over to BDS, if I recall correctly. Distracted by Broken Blade's dulcet tones, that yeah. guy. Ice is dead. If he survives this, he's got ice in his veins along with his name. Flashes away, but there's the lockdown of Azok. We'll take the kill. Yeah, he kind of just melted, and unfortunately burnt the flash on top of that as well, so... Not exactly. <laughs> if it's an Australian one, is it down Sunder Sky? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Flash in from Jun in the mid lane. New caught out, puts the Emperor's right down, but the damage from the Yumus. Plus the shockwave from Humanoid is just enough to lock down the enemy mid. Fnatic now skill Not issue. That I'm it's a skill so. issue, really, isn't it? Overall. <laughs> what, the way you send it the wrong direction? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very true. As the arrow comes down towards this bottom side, Humanoid will be able to dodge it, but Cher will lock him up with the season desist, and Humanoid is battered into the wall and battered to an early grave. As BDS this strike. is a, a more confident BDS, I will say, though. One of the things I haven't been impressed with is the way that they played the mid game. And at the moment, ooh. Labrov nearly getting the flash play, but um, they've been doing a really good job of actually playing at the map and playing better. Adam, Here we no, go. Where are you going, mate? Adam just flashing in with the Ragnarok chasing in, and he is CC immune. Adam takes out Noah, and now this tower as well might be next on the menu. Crescent Guard coming out from Razork, the tank from Labrov. He'll go down. Jun doing a good job of getting that kill, but Ice is going to join the party. Jun left to the wolves underneath the turret. BDS will get two out of it. They'll lose a tower in the top lane, but they could continue to push in if they so desire. Don't really have a minion wave to do so. I mean, BDS are constantly trading open. You're starting to get into a position where Rabadon's death cap nearly completed for new. The Ice and Labrov can kind of look for picks. I mean, even here on Razor, you could get one. Razor should be able to get to the blast cone. Adam, though, flanking him. Razor could flash back over the wall here as soon as he sees Adam. He does that. Labrov is channeling the hex flash. Humanoid here to try and help out his mid, uh, his jungler. Ice comes in from the side. Razork still no flash. A good hook from Lebov. Even with the shockwave pulling him in back, only helping bring Razork into the waiting arms of BDS. There's the arrow as well as Humano is now locked up. He'll have to burn the flash. Jun trying to get it from the side. Adam doesn't have the Ragnarok for five and doesn't really have a health bar to work with. Oscar in on his way here though. He should be able to slide and glide his way away. Oscar in could look for the E2. Charges forward once again. There is the bird form, the Phoenix form. As Oscar in now under the tower realizes. Ooh, not really a trade I want to take any further. The rest of Fnatic on their way, though. Nuke still has the flash. Doesn't have the dash to get away, but flashes into the Emperor's Divide. Tries to put the damage down before he falls. Adam joining in. Has that Ragnarok back available, but no ghost. BDS trying to collapse as the Sun Disc still helps out BDS by claiming out the minions. Jun gonna sacrifice himself for the good of his team, and Sheo and Lebrov will dash across the wall. Now, Adam could push this wave in. Razok spots them out with a Scryer's Bloom. Oscar in and trying to run away. Humanoid trying to get his recall up. The Chain of Corruption lands onto Sheo, and now he's a bit isolated from the rest of BDS. Humanoid stopped his back. Razok pushing in mid. Sheo lands the Flash Q this time. Double E, but the hook's not going to get you away as Oscar in it falls to ice all the while. Razok to have opponents for the weekend after they had what I think most would consider a relatively easy week one with Vitality Giant X. The hook's gonna go down here. Blue buff given to the entire team as Jun flashes forward, looking for the knock-up. The root's gonna land on Sheo as well as he will be shot out of the fight by Razor. You can see how much investment there is for a buff early days here. It's just Baron. So we'll want to be spamming out the spells. Oscar in as well. Loved to spam the spells on Udo as Sheo. Sheo is behind enemy lines and Jun is here to collapse. The Bob realizes, like, okay, mate. Second time in a row we've seen Sheo fall. This one more his fault than the first. And Fnatic teleport, wants it. No teleport on Oscar in either, so he's joined up with Fnatic. It's a 5v5 in the mid lane right now. Shockwave on Razzle, but he falls short. The hook landing as well as Humanoid's brought back into the midst of BDS. Ice starting to put the damage down. It's all nuke so far. There's the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Lands only onto Jun Razzle. Trying to get in, but he's just trying to get out. In fact, 
as Nuke will take him out. Jun here puts down the Magnus Storm, but BDS find three as Fnatic once again missed the engage. Yeah, the engage goes completely awry, and then Labrov, immediate turnaround onto Humanoid, and that could net BDS. Baron here, immediately going to start this one up, and you can already see, like, Noah's not going to be able to do particularly much, neither no scared, and so BDS just finding that one moment to turn it all around. Just felt like a little bit of an overforce from Fnatic. They saw time. the flash, wind becomes lightning into shockwave combination, but they couldn't quite land it. And uh, Labrov then looking for the hook. Let's see if you can try and fish for someone here as they again start to move up. This is so hard for Fnatic. There's the arrow. Hands on to Jun. Sheo going onto the back line as well. Might be an overset from BDS already, though. Oscar Winnin has fallen. Sheo able to get out the Magnus Sword from Jun. Can Fnatic follow up? A great shockwave lands on three, but they just don't have the damage as Adam starts to run rampant through the Fnatic back lines. Adam gets to the tower as well, a possibility. Instead, they turn their eyes to mid. Nuke will get bot lane inhibitor, and BDS will take the fight. They could look for more. 20 seconds still on Jun. Are they just going to walk these minions in for the win? Especially when you've got the Void Mites as well. There's Flash the Hulk! Noah! He's on a bouncy castle, and it's not a fun party to attend. BDS will take down the Nexus Towers, and in convincing fashion, demolish a Fnatic and join up with SK and G2 oh, come on. <laughs> at the top of the table. Jun tries to escape, but there's no escape from BDS today. Three and one in week two. Impressive stuff from BDS. Yeah, Analyst S were so shocked, they're all lying on the floor. They fainted. <laughs> just an incredible performance. Maybe they're just out of popcorn, yep. you know? It's That's possible. it. It's just like after an entertaining win like that. I definitely wouldn't mind much on some popcorn myself, but I think the big takeaway here is that BDS again looking fantastic. Nuke looking fantastic on this um, this is here as well. And even Labrov managing to connect with a few. The Cassante was taken away, and that means oh, Oda Wamne, you played one other champion this year. It's the Aatrox. <laughs> Obviously, it does benefit a lot from the sustain and the healing that a Seraphine and a Senna can provide. The Ocean Drake as well is only going to help them out. God, thank God it's not Ocean Soul. No. <laughs> Carmen Corp just you might so as well as FM at that stage. It's like no, 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 no. <laughs> You can see both teams just willing to farm up towards those level sixes. They're able to start it, but again, Giant X just poking their heads in, and you don't really have an area to try and reset out of. Carmen Corp have to get over the wall. He jumps onto Saken. There's the Emperor's Divide. Crescent Guard used as well. Might just be a smite by as they dash into the back line. Upset going in with the Killer Instinct as well, and Capuchot's hit first. Carmen Corp secure the Dragon. Jackie's trying to dash out. Odo on his way as well as his bow has fallen. Capuchot doing a lot of work here on the back line. He all outs the wrong player as he pulls out Peach. But already, Jackie's has gone down. Peach flashes the wall. Capuchot doing everything he can, and Odo's finally joined the party, he's looking for a bit of a Barney in this bot side river, flashes towards Saken, but Saken flashes away, the Q3 not connecting, Cabochard forced up to the top side, but KC, they only lose one, they get one in response, and they get the drain. Of this, I think they will accept that they shouldn't go for this, the Rift have now placed, hey, they are looking for mid lane, it is Dream Maker, by the way, for Patrick, didn't go Celestial opposition, instead deciding he just wants to buff up his teammates, giving them extra damage, and giving them some shieldings, the quickness goes in, only lands on Peach, the charm continues, though as Cabochard has TP'd into the bottom lane, the charm's gonna go down, as Igna runs towards the bottom side of the fight. Absolute darkness as Patrick locked up. Upset gets one, and this is a great fight for Carmine Core. They've taken out two, now it's a 4v3. Jackie's dives back in onto the back line, onto Upset, but do they have the damage to take out Targamas? They will. Giant X get one in response, and it's another as Bow Balls. Now Cabochard and Upset having to find a way back to safety. Oda Omni continues to trade in. I don't really think Giant X want any more of this pie. And they're looking for another piece as Upset Ooh. almost takes out Jackie. The flash away will get him to safety. Each dives back forward. Upset gets isolated. Lads, stop damage. it! Stop it! Yeah, just stop Let fighting. them go! Just stop fighting, just run away, and Topo from Cabochard won't be in range. In the end, the Drake and. It wasn't too cold, yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. It was fierce mild. Fierce mild, man, as Bo hit, collapsed on. Carmine Court find a little bit wanting as Bo dives in with the cease and desist, but Ignar should have the damage to take him out. Now Odo Omne is on the chase with the World Ender. Dash away from Saken, dash in by Cabochard to try and distract the Giant X, but the chase continues. Jackie going in, the stopwatch to stop the Emperor's Divide. Upset coming in from the side as well, but Cabochard now rooted up with the last embrace as Giant X continue just to slow and to be a thorn in the side of Carmine Core. Another kill over to Jackie's, he's on a killing spree now. And Giant X, they won't turn to the Baron, but they are. And even trying to take a Baron isn't really a threat, but on the upside, Carmine Corp have a lot of damage towards this Baron. And Giant X goes put it out. Has one control ward, that's down. Has one more ward after this. Carmine Corp get pulled in there. Here's the Encore. Carmine Corp want a little bit more of this Baron, though, as Oda Wamne dives in. As does Peach, the smite so early as Peach takes it. 
the smite was in last week how early it was as Carmine Core now have to run away Bo taken out the Baron taken under their noses Saken may be taken out of the fight as well as he tries to flash away but the infernal chains will pull him back Cabochard tries to act as a blocker but all he can do is block with his life giant X clean up at the Baron Carmine Core fans are blocking their eyes after that one the smite goes wide the even fight in a front to back you're now looking at Seraph's Moonstone's uh, Seeker's Arm Guard, the charm once again. And once again, it's Carmine Core getting caught out, overstepping the Crescent Guard out as Bo tries to escape. Oda Wamley lands the knockup onto targets. Bo down once again. G Giant X continue to poke and to prod and to be a nuisance for Carmine Core. That nuisance is turning into a hell of a problem. Barrened up minions in the mid lane, in the bot lane. We said Giant X couldn't take towers that easily, where when you have Baron and the enemy's in a 4v5 situation, it becomes a dance side. Apart from the Thornmail for Kabashar, but no one's going to be autoing him. They don't really care about the Cassante Peach now, stepping into the midst of Carmine Core. Target must look for something, and he has to dash out. A battle dance away. The charm on Core lands, and Bo's locked up. Jackie's goes unstoppable. The sweep back with the Emperor's Divide and a dawning shadow. Perhaps the shadow starting to fall over Carmine Core. As Jackie's finds another, the Baron now well and truly in Giant X's eyes. Jackie's with one more kill off the back of that, immediately going to start to move over towards this Baron. I think that's exactly how you wanted to try and play this Giant X. Your Baron take isn't great, and you don't want to put yourself in a position with Carmen Corp and Flank. So they get the picks, they'll move over towards the big purple worm, and already you can see Saken moving bot side. He knows that this one's a goner. And again, it's Carmen Core not being on the same page. Targamus goes in. Peach is just face checking. Where, where Honestly, you can put Peach into mid to start to threaten that as well, just to try and spread them up, because this is what happens if you don't. And Jackie does have flash, he since this goes down. He puts out the Twilight Shroud. Good stopwatch to dodge away from the Emperor's Divide. Jackie's still dancing around, though the shutdown now to Saken. Can Giant X push in in the bot lane? There's no TP on Bo, obviously. Saken has one, but he's not going to respond. It will be an inhibitor for a shutdown. Giant X getting the standing objectives, whereas Carmen Corp get the living ones. Oda Wamne back. He's yet to get that third item, though. Still only sitting on the Rabadons and the Umbral, and it's an elder fight. Oda Wamne looking for the flank. Kavoshard and Carmine Corp in the river right now. Targamus has that quickness, has the flash, can look for the engage. Elder down to 12,000. Jackie's and Igna going round for the flank, but they'll be spotted on that far side alteration ward. Targamus going to try and body block here. The Crescent Guard out from Peaches. He flashes forward. Dawning Shadow out as well. Jackie's with a stopwatch. Bo trying to get away. Saken doing the same. Kabashar dashing back, but Saken's already down. Bo's going to fall as well. And Upset has not had any impact in this fight at all. His front line has been destroyed, dismantled in front of his very eyes. And Giant X are looking to chase him down for the kill and for the win. They even TP behind him. Could have looked for the base, but instead they want the ace. Now the TP's rain down as Giant X look to force Carmine Core to 0-4. It will be a 0-4 start for the French team. But for Giant X, a big win for them and a confident win as they be able to pick up another one in the W column for Giant X. They took the L out of their name, now they're just Giant W as they take down Carmine Cool. An incredibly potent combo, this uh, bot lane, with the Senna and the Seraphine being able to heal up everyone, but Giant X, they did exactly what they needed to. Play it slow, don't give any sort of access to Carmine Corp to take over the game, and as long as you can get to a point where you have this Senna, Senna, Senna Seraphine online, it's going to be so easy with, you know, even the in-built sustain you get.